So you're ready to create your first component. In this video, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to create a header component that'll rest at the top of every single one of your screens. I've pulled up a sample app, which contains a tutorial screen, a list screen, and a success screen. The header component at the top, I create one time, and it allows me to go back each screen. Let's go ahead and build it. To get started, I go into the tree view where there is now a tab for components. When I select it, I see an option for adding a new component. When I click that, there is a new square canvas that appears. This is my indicator that I'm now editing a component. Let's start by renaming this component. This is what I would do as I would normally edit an app. I'll call this header. The next thing that I want to do is define the dimensions of this header component. How big do I want it to be? I'll go ahead and change the height to 80 pixels tall. When you're defining your own component, you might want to use some relative positioning and sizing. I'll leave that up to you. Next, I insert the controls that are going to be part of this component. I know I want to have a label. This is going to show the name of the screen. I insert a back arrow. This back arrow is going to allow me to go back one screen at a time. Now let's do some basic formatting. I select that label again. I want the text to be centered and I want it to be a larger font size. Going back to that back arrow, let's go ahead and change its dimensions. I'll make it 64 pixels by 64 pixels. Just as I would edit a normal app, I can define the on select properties of this icon. When I click this icon, I want it to go back. So I use the back function. And just for a finishing touch, let's do something interesting by inserting an image control. We'll use this image control to show the image of the person who's logged in. Again, let's change the dimensions of this image. We'll give it some radius of about 32 pixels. We'll change its image property so that it points to the user and their image. So we've included all of the controls that are part of this component. Now is where things get very interesting. The properties you know and love in Power Apps uh, are now available for you to create your own. So I could define a new property that I'll be using for the color of the font, the color of the icon. I'll call it color. And I do this on purpose because I want to use the same patterns that I know and love from Power Apps. I can define a display name, the property of the name itself. This is the name where I'm going to be using for referencing. A description of it, the color of the font and icon. This is an input property, meaning it's something that I define uh, ahead of time. And I could define the type of data this is. I want it to be a color. I click Create. Now when I select color, I can define a default color. Let's go ahead and go into the properties for the icon and the label. I want the icon to reference that color component or that color property that I had just come up with. And I can do that by referencing the header dot color. I'm going to do the same thing for the text. I go to the labels color property and I replace it with header.color. The component itself already has a fill property. I'll select the fill color 
Now I'm going to go back into the color property of the header component, and I'll change it so that it's white. You'll see right away that because the icon and the label reference the color property that we just created, they both change to match what I just changed it to. My header is almost ready. I'm going to add another property. This one's going to be the text property. What text do I want to appear in this header component? Text that appears in the header. The data type will be text. I click create. I go to the label. And instead of showing the word text, I want to point it to that new property for the header. So I reference header.text. So whatever I change this text property to, it'll appear here. And I want that to change on each screen that I go to. Let's go ahead and insert this component into that first screen, and then we'll do a little bit of configuration to make it work across the entire app. Inside the first screen, I go to the Insert menu. There is now a new dropdown for components. The components that are part of this app will appear here. You can also import components and export existing components that are in this app. When I select Header, it will be inserted on the screen at the very top. As I said earlier, I'm going to be giving this component a little bit more information. Right now, it's showing the word text. As part of this app, I gave it a collection of the different screens that are here. Screen 1 is the tutorial screen, screen 2 is the list, and screen 3, the success screen. This is part of a collection. Because it's part of a collection, I could do a lookup to it. If I look up the current screen that I'm on and it matches one of these, I want it to return the display name. That's what I want to do with this component. So instead of showing the word text, I'm going to do a lookup. Lookup from that collection of screens where the screen matches the app's active screen. Return the display name of that current screen. So when I'm on the tutorial screen, it shows the word tutorial. I'm going to copy this instance of the component to the list screen. You'll see that the word list appears here instead of the word tutorial. And when I paste it to the success screen, it shows the corresponding display name for that screen. So that's all there is to making your very first header component. Please stay tuned for some additional tutorials on how to make even more advanced components. Thanks for watching.